hae ya kihina na ha ya shi ho he ya wei huli shiki to it ask you one question through this and then truly ask yourself do you understand life and if you do understand life then do you really understand music if you understand music then why the hell are you still here
Tom and Sean, uh, I think if I got the right number now, I'll try reaching you a couple times. But give me a call. I'd like to meet up. Um, have a little discussion about this project. I'm going to be out postering tonight, so give me a call a little bit. Maybe we can even meet up. All right. Okay. Bye. I developed a concept in 2004 when I was recovering from an accident and um, I was basically laid up in the hospital and you know everything was taken away from me I couldn't walk and, and my band was, I don't know, I thought it was going to be dissolved, the hub. <laughs> Fortunately, the hub still is together, but I decided I wanted to do something different. I wanted to combine um, African music and, and music from the hub to create something original. I wanted to make my own idea. And as I got further and further into Brew by Noon, I realized that I wanted to, to bring together diverse people uh, and, and uh, um, different musical concepts. And I also wanted to have uh, storytelling and folk music to be a part of the music. I really wanted my music to have like some programmatic sort of meaning to it. And that's what Brew by News. Brew by News is brewing uh, specific ideas and specific concepts together. But tonight we're just going to give them a little uh, taste test of what's going to happen. <laughs> hey, Sean. Uh, I think we're all set. Oh. All right, stories to tell. Okay, okay. And then after that's the Armenian folk oh, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what to do on that. You come back out. Yeah. And then we do the urban one. Hello, oh. Armenians. Hey, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is sort of a preview to our show next week at Symphony Space. We have an interesting night of music from a commission from the American Composers Forum. It's all about improvisation, man, and that's why I That's what it tonight, was. You know? It was all about, and also communication. Yeah. 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 And, 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 the, and the second, the third thing is connection. Yeah. It's cool that you um, are thinking of using the stuff from the Bob Ez shop. Like, wow, that's kind of cool.
Mark Slope, and was, you know, I was just like kind of hanging out. You know, there's a lot of musicians in this neighborhood, a lot of jazz musicians, just people always walking around with instruments. And I hung out and I played at like Barbez and a lot of the, the music places in, in this neighborhood, and I just got to, to know Matt um, just from hanging out. Like, you know, I'll go to like a bar in my neighborhood bar, and he'll be there. And, and we wind up just like you know um, talking about music, and then I re I just I've always loved his playing. And when I saw him play in Boston with his father Joe Maneri, who's a real like really eccentric and unique character that I, who I think is very underrated um, and under. Um, Appreciate it. No one really gives him a lot of credit, but he's done a lot of cool things with Michael Tone music. kind of like he, he's, he's an amazing improviser and his ears are just unbelievable it's like March of 2003 and I was playing with the hub and I uh, promoted this concert the hub play and uh, Mark Rebo uh, and I invited Mark to, to come and play wh whoever he wanted and he was inspired to put together a new a new project that he never had played with so he chose uh, Jamal Dean Nakuma and Calvin Wesson and that was a an awesome concert like the hub play and they, and they played after it was really fun <laughs> The second time that Mark played with Jamal Dean Nakuma was, was literally like, you know, four months after my accident. And it was the first time I came back to New York and I went to the concert to see him play and I had my crutches. And, you know, it was, it was great for me just to get out of the house and go out in public. And I just, you know, talked to Mark after the show and, you know, and he really kind of, um, you know, motivated me to encouraged me, you know, everything's going to be okay. And, and things have, have been okay. I talked to Jamal at, at that concert. Uh, when I was with my crutches and you know he was really like he's a real uh, deep guy he's very happy very religious very positive person um, we kept in touch correspondent through email and I just, just stuck this guy and I knew that I you know I wanted to have him involved so I was like oh this would be perfect to, 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 to do something with Jamal and Mark because you know they play together really well and, and also it's just kind of like a coincidence that that I you know these two guys play you know, together for the first time because of, of the concert that I had organized, and I, f I felt kind of uh, intri intrigued by this. Uh, so I wanted to discover more, more possibilities. The group is with the and we basically take the first A, A, B, B. Yep, and there's a second A, B, ending. B, B, first ending, second ending. To see. Da 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 Da, 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 da. I mean, we'll play that riff, but you can go right to okay, the solo. Okay, three times. Okay, so uh, the absolute chaos, distortion, that's yeah, me. That's you. You're the, you, you basically solo. solo. Okay, and, and it, and yell out Mark. Like oh yeah, just like go right into the yeah. thing. As soon as we go to bada, bada, just come right in with your crazy stuff. Now when you write this, when you write it out as triplets, uh, is, it, is this really what it is? No, You're writing it as triplets here. Yeah. But in fact, I, I this it. is the same. This is yeah, metrically right. metric so conversion. In other words, quarter equals dotted quarter, right? That's the thing. Yeah. So it's it's not. Da 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 da. It's. Da 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 da
Well, this stuff was just Cherno, the bass player, just playing it. And I, I basically transcribe out. all this, just all transcribe it, all from and I had to kind of like find a way to put it on paper. Oh, cool. Mm. And this is actually this song is about the king of the uh, Malian Empire and how he wanted to marry a woman who was already married. <laughs> he wanted to die when he was. Water and folk concept is something that I completely invented. It was like this vision that I had, you know. It was, you know, uh, no, actually, the water and folk concept is something that I um, wrote a uh, um, a proposal on for, to the American Composers Forum because to get some money because I was poor, and uh, fortunately they gave me a commission to write music, uh, original compositions uh, based on the water and folk concept, and basically. Uh, it's when you take an idea, a musical idea, and you bring it to a, a different person or a different group of people and they transform and they brew or they communally create the composition together. And I wanted to do that with my music because I thought that it would be great to bring a, a theme, a melody, a story to, uh, to a musician and say, you come up with, uh, you come up with the, the storyline. Uh, I did that with uh, Espy, a song that I wrote about a baby elephant uh, named Espy that gets lost. And I gave this story to Abdul Ajibate, who's a griot, a griot to like a West African um, wandering musician storyteller. And he came up with this, this beautiful um, uh, interpretation of, of my wandering folk idea. Where we from is Mandingo. Yeah. You know, we're from Mandingo. But, okay. I, but when you did the speak, we understand. Mm. You know, yeah, of course. When yeah, we, yeah. We are, you know, oh yeah, yeah. No, it's, but it's, it's the same language. You know, the same language, it's, but yeah. it's a little different. Yeah. Okay. It's like it's a little, like going to like it's, Texas. It's like a little different uh, uh, from music. You know, the the music Mandingo and the music Waslo is not the same. No, it's much different. Uh, you know, too much different. But these songs are, are Mandingo. Yeah. When you we, yeah, we, yeah. we just play. Yeah. Yeah, it's Mandingo. Yeah. But are these Waslo? This one. Oh, this one's Waslo. This is Waslo. Conservative, and, and they're not so into you know, um, you know, art and music. They don't really, really promote it and, and encourage it. They really want to, want us to be like normal people. But I realize that uh, that I'm, I'm not a normal person at all, and I have this sort of special uh, um, motivation to want to really do do something unique with my life. I had to go pick up Abdullah, you know, and Jared and we went down to the... It was actually the first time that Susan and Abdullah worked out ideas and sung together, and it was, it was kind of interesting, you know? Because, um, I mean, it was, it was in my mind, I was thinking, like, how, how, it, how it would work, and, and if it would work, and, and I believe it would, and it, it came out nice. And she, she, she's definitely, um, has a a big influence on the, on the direction of the, the singing and, and the lyrics and stuff and um, the stories that are behind it. Like she would experiment with many different types of uh, stories and, and poems uh, that that are connected with these pieces. And, and basically, I gave her the freedom with that. I didn't want to tell her like this has to be a piece that that goes like this. Susan, you know, you can only sing about this. I mean, you know, there's an Armenian folk folk song of arms that that was called Karaslama, 
and it doesn't even, um, and Karaslama, we looked into it, what does Karaslama mean? Didn't really, it doesn't really mean anything except it's a uh, rhythm in nine. Da, 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 da. like an opportunity to add anything to that rhythm in nine you know so she picked this uh, uh, Celtic prayer she took the lyrics from that <laughs> Because the picture could have been a little bit bigger, but oh well. I told him, told him to try to make it. Can hold it up again? Yeah, try to. But yeah, it talks about some. It's pretty accurate review uh, or just um, analysis of the project. You know, you know these uh, downtown alchemists mixed with these, uh, uh, you know, folk uh, Irish folk singer and Molly and Griot, and uh, how the music's. Um, comes from an angle of self-discovery, which is which is kind of cool. I think this is perfect, perfectly how I would like it to describe, you know. We're going um, to see the Grio uh, Master Abdullah Jabate up here in the Bronx, next to Yankee Stadium. It's always a pleasure to go up and hang out with Tumani, his son. He actually gives me um, drum lessons. Uh, well, we're gonna set up at 3:30. You know, take our time and do a like, sound check slash uh, rehearsal of the music. Uh, Rebo has really never played this music and gave him the music in the mail and uh, gave him the CD and he's checked it out. And yeah, we, we're gonna see some interesting things. We're gonna see how how this whole thing goes and and how it's gonna work out. I only know about 50% of what's gonna happen. It's Sean. It's Sean. That's my brother. This is my my brother. The, yeah. first, the, the first son for my father. And the guy that you stayed with him in Bamako? Yeah. What's his name? His name is Fodi Kappa. Okay. We have Kasimari Javati too. Yeah. Lafia Javati. Mamuruba Javati. Jigiba Javati. These these are all your 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 brothers. All my brother. Yeah. How many yeah. brothers all do you have? Brother. 16, 16 kids. Uh, and brother, oh, too much. Many brother. So this is just uh, a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's my brother, same father, same mother, this guy. Yeah? Yeah. Now, uh, uh, where, whose house is, is this your, is this your brother's house or? Uh, yeah, but, uh, he, yeah. Who's that? My daughter. Dora for Kasmari. Yeah. My daughter Kasmari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's coming to to see us. 
veseli, evo, nota ne nasviju. In this kettle? No, 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 in the bottom. Oh. Can you hear me? Interesting family. I learned a lot. Like he's actually uh, my drum teacher these days. I'm gonna, just gonna try to teach me to play like that, you know. Yes. So what, what's this, this song that you you were teaching? Uh, Let's take this here. Yeah. 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 So, so Abdullah, could you tell us about um, the the story of SP, the song that we're that we're gonna do today? Ne, ne ma njogo ni samadi ni tarakanato. I say, I don't never see, I don't never see the small the elephant go. Uh, he don't touch his mother. Mm. Uh, no, I don't never see mm. because when he go, the baby go. Mm. He, he go he wait with his mother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Abra, abra. I say ne ma nyogonye. I don't see never see. I don't never see the elephant. Mm. The small elephant go. Sama mana hula yari wala so. Yes. Sama reni mana sila ye ayi wala so. Yeah. Yeah. Sama mana sila ye ayi wala so. Sama reni mana sila ye ayi wala so. What do you say? I say uh, the small elephant. Now he see the way yes. to go home. Oh, he's happy. He see the way he go now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Africa, oh Africa, oh Liban, oh, Africa is nice. Massachusetts, just like I, and he uh, 
He's Armenian. At least he says he is. Um, no, he really is an Armenian uh, dude. Uh, he's from Massachusetts. We have a lot, a lot of in common. We're very similar um, in terms. Of people from uh, Massachusetts are very. Uh, they got this not an attitude, but they've got a lot of you know. You know, we like to get people's faces, and you know, we don't have patience, and you know, we come from that whole like uptight, like you know, northeast coast vibe. You know, different than being from New York City, where people are very laid back and, and kind of um, uh, you know willing to accept different things. Uh, I mean, you would have to ask him that question, but I I believe Massachusetts and Boston is quite a conservative place. I was in college. Um, I have a choice of spending a year abroad in Italy or France or Amsterdam and I was like, no, I can go to those places some other time. I'm going to go to West Africa. And Ghana is, it was, you know, obviously one of the more safe countries in West Africa um, and the music's great so I thought, hey, I'll go there. And uh, I studied drumming and learned all uh, the traditional pieces. The rhythm, the stuff I really like there is the stuff from the north. Um, uh, you know, there's a city called uh, Tamale in the northern part of Ghana, and they have uh, these this big drum called Brekete, Brekete, and then these instruments called Dundons, which are um, you know like the talking drums that everybody knows with the strings, and they you know change pitch. And the, when I was traveling up there, you'd see the guys with the big drums, and and then. They, they'll play a rhythm, and there'll be like four or five of the talking drums, and they'll play the rhythm, they'll sort of do this circular thing. Where one guy will play one part of the rhythm, and they'll sort of go around, so it'll be like da 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 And it's, the rhythms are so complex. Um, I would sort of compare it to, um, you know, you have like, like you know, chord changes in jazz, and then you know, the soloist playing these complex harmonies, and complex uh, scale patterns above it, it's like that, but then it's like the nth degree. So you'll have like a bass rhythm of, you know, one, two, three, four, and then, you know, the, the big drums are playing something that's sort of like up here, uh, and you have to sort of internalize that that uh, that tempo. And then, you know, the, uh, the talking drums are just at a completely different level. It sounds, if you don't understand what they're doing, it sounds like they're just playing randomly. Um, and then you know the djembe rhythms are just a whole other ball game. The stuff from you know Mali and Senegal and things like that. Um, it's a lot of fun. That's one of the fun things about playing with Abdullah and uh, Chirno is that um, you know I, I get to play stuff like that again, um, and I haven't you know, haven't played it in a while, and it's fun. It's really really challenging. I mean Ab Abdullah when he plays guitar. It's like a whole other style of playing, and it, it, you know, I just learned so much, you know, playing with him night after night because he hears uh, rhythm and music differently than I do, um, and it's it's fun both complementing what he does, but also starting to be able to hear hear how he hears. Um, it's a great learning experience. <laughs> I like the way he does the things that are like, a, it's like, a, you know, you know what sounds like a chorus, like, oh yeah, 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 you do that on guitar, <laughs> in like chorus, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
and uh, he called me, I think it was uh, during Christmas break, and said, hey, Aram, do you want to do this gig down in, uh, oh, what was the name of the town? Some town in, uh, in Massachusetts. And I said, yeah, sure, Tim, I'll do it. I was just doing some standards, jazz standards at a, uh, a restaurant. And I, uh, I went and uh, went and did the gig and met this uh, great drummer named Sean. There was some uh, famous football player who was there too, so we hung out with him. And, and then I didn't see him for another you know, three, four years. I moved to New York and uh, Tim called me to do another gig. Um, but it was in Cape Cod. So we had a four hour drive. <laughs> we played the gig, we drove four hours back. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, that's why I met Sean the second time, and we started playing after that. very small and uh, and I think because of that it made me want to move to New York because um, every time I go back there after a few days I want to kill myself um, it was just very kind of boring but it was it was good because it in a way it uh, it led me to just sort of spend a lot of time up in my room as a kid playing my guitar and you know I would remember seeing what would it sound like if I threw this thing across the room and it would sound cool um, and uh, ever since I was first started playing, I was into just fucked up sounds. <laughs> ideas uh, to bring together the West, West African uh, music and, and folk music and the Celtic uh, music. I mean, people are like, what is what relationship is there, are there between these two people? Griots are, are West African, um, like I said, praise singers, uh, poets, warring musicians. In Ireland, they have bards. Bards are, are, are the same thing. Uh, bards are, are warring poets, musicians, storytellers. And both Ireland and Mali <coughs> have a rich tradition of of storytelling and folk music uh, um, in Ireland, you know, there's great uh, play writers and great um, uh, 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 story writers and uh, poets and, and amazing, amazing literature um, that was written down uh, mostly. Um, and in Mali, there's, there's a huge tradition of, of, of oral uh, 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 teachings of, of stories and folk traditions. And as a result, I was like, wow, there's a lot of cool things in, cons and, 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 um, common here. And I was like, well, I need to really, really keep these traditions alive. I don't really think there are many people who are, are doing that. And I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, you know re-resurrect, uh, um, you know, old stories that probably would be forgotten or disappear over time. And I've, I'm very curious uh, about this. And, in some ways, it's I think of myself as some kind of ethnomusicologist, even though I'm really not. I'm just a drummer.
We used to, we'd play, like I put clips on the guitar, and we'd play like fake West African music. And Dougie would tell stories about like being in New Jersey and getting drunk and people falling off the boardwalk into their own puke. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Thanks, yeah, I got this in India. Well, I think you'll like it. Uh, Thank you, everyone. We got Mr. Jamaluddin Takuma on the bass. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Let's go down the line. Matt Maneri on viola. Yeah. Matt Maneri on guitar. Matt Maneri on guitar. Matt Maneri on guitar. Matt Maneri on guitar. Three lovely singers. Susan McHugh on vocals. Everyone on guitar. This one's uh, this one, this one's for Pat. It's called Pat the Cat.
Well, Sean asked me to speak a little bit about the Gaelic element of this project, and I should say I'm Susan and I'm from Dublin, and it's a real honour and privilege to be here with this great gathering of people on the stage, put together by Sean Noonan tonight. And a cab driver asked me yesterday where I was from, and I said Ireland, and he said, is that in South America? And I said, no, and it's the one beside England. And he said, oh, English. I said, no, we're not English. We have our own language. It's the little green one uh, with the leprechauns, you know, St. Patrick's Day. It's St. Patrick's Day. He knew what that was. So we do have our own language. And that's what Sean asked me to sing in uh, for my contribution as part of this evening and Sean's album. Uh, the last piece we just did, I sang in Irish on it. And when he came to my little East Village place, uh, the first time we met, he had sent me this music. And that was a song I felt uh, fitted in very well and um, it's a melody that's very common, there's different versions all over Ireland and it's a story that's common to many different parts of the world and that's part of what uh, uh, some of my work is and what attracted me to the work that Sean is doing because he weaves wandering folk melodies together and brings together musicians who are doing their own thing in their own area and, and makes it work. So what you were just listening to, at least lyrically, uh, was a song about a man who meets a young woman in the morning on her way to him and he convinces her not to go to work at all looking after the cows but to come to the pub. It always ends up in the pub. <laughs> the so in the morning, of course, they ended up in the pub until the next morning. And this next song is a piece that was inspired by a, an Armenian folk song which Aaron brought to the project. And it's just very, uh, a very beautiful lyrical piece. And when they were playing it for me, I was uh, thinking about this poem that I knew. Now this song, this poem is old, so in Irish terms, that means at least a thousand years old. It's probably a ninth century poem. And it would be in a poem that people said, because people marked the day in, in terms of prayers. And this, was, this had gone back to pre-Christianity. So there were prayers for lighting the fire in the morning and they bag it down at night and say another prayer. So the translation of this is, I will build my fire today in the presence of the holy angels of heaven, in the presence of Ariel, shapely in form. It's a poem to different gods. In the presence of Ariel, of all the beauties, with no hatred, no envy, no jealousy, no fear or terror of anyone under the sun. For my refuge is in God. Kindle inside my heart the spark of love. <laughs>
I try to get on the passion. To do what you want to do. That's good. And, and, That's and good too. I, yeah, I like my song. I, I appreciate it for you. Cat? That cat. I have a cat. <laughs> the first song was my favorite, though. Oh, nice. The first song. Well, who's in the first one? Uh, Masana. That's my favorite song right now. I'm going to put it on my iPod right now. song Timmy yet? You write a song called Timmy. Did you ever finish it? No, oh. I didn't finish it. Oh, you haven't finished it yet? I'm waiting to hear it. Timmy? I have to wait for the engine the time you come back. And cut the cut. Yeah. You, oh, like, yeah. you like the song? He oh. said you have to write Timmy. <laughs> tell me, are you finished with Timmy? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, we're waiting for the angel to come tell us. Okay. But it's almost done. That's the funny, man. The reason why I wanted to bring folk music into the into the uh, into my jazz music was it was something that I have never done, and and I also I wanted to progress and move forward and try some different concepts. I hadn't really seen. Um, I'm sure there are people, but I haven't been paying much attention. Uh, many artists who are interested in doing modern interpretations of folk music and coming up with uh, uh, new interpretations or creating new stories, which is which is what I like to do. I like to make up like things that are completely unbelievable and and usually they're not true. Uh, they're all uh, you know fictitious uh, uh, images in my brain. But I really wanted my music to have. Uh, more than one meaning, you know. It, I felt that this, this can really engage an audience. Uh, it can really, uh, you really capture people's attention. Um, it, it, it's it's multi-dimensional and it's also multicultural. March twenty fifth. It's a Sunday. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like right, like like five minute walk from here. Oh. So we, we come and you, and you you do your your acoustic songs and then we, we play with the whole band and everyone sees everyone play. We can all like just it's a big jam session.
bass player concept is something that, that I'm in, interested in presenting into Brew by Noon. And then, do you know that uh, there's a, a place called the Tea Lounge on April 5th? This will be just like practice. We can practice with uh, Jamal D. and Takuma. Cherno and Jamal together at the tea lounge and people said oh you can never do that you can never have two bass players two electric bass players playing together and again you know I've always been through my life people have always told me you can't do things you can't you can never make any music you can never uh, you know have an Irish and African singing together you can never have two electric bass players so I realized that I just don't listen to what any anything anyone has to say if it's if it's negative or if it doesn't encourage me to do what I want to do. If you want to do something in life, just do it yourself. That's it. You know, just no questions asked.
tour with the whole band, it was, it was, it was an awesome experience. I mean, it, was, it just clicked very easily. And when things click and they work, like, you don't question it. You just, just like, you don't ask any questions. You just, just keep playing and you just keep throwing out, like, pumping out new ideas, new compositions, and, and, you, and you see what happens. And just the band rocked. I mean, having you know Jamal and, and Matt and Sean and Abdullah and myself just all playing every night, night after night. It just uh, just really became uh, such a great group. And uh, I'm looking forward to recording again with them. We had, we had a good time. So. And you know, the thing I admire about Sean is that he thinks big. You know, he's always trying to do big. He has these grand ideas, and he he. He does them, um, and a lot of times he'll come to me with this idea, and I'll be like, you know, "What the hell are you thinking?" And then as it forms and as it develops, I'm like, "Oh wow!" It, I actually am able to see what he's hearing, and that was actually something that happened on the tour. Um, you know, some of the tunes that that we did, uh, and we played night after night. After a while, I was able to really hear um, exactly how he was hearing, um, and it was it was really great. I'm hoping to to bring Brew by Noon to uh, Ireland and, and and West Africa. That's that's my my dream in life to, to play this music in these two uh, remote and and unique places. The amazing thing about this space is that um, like Bad Moon Rising and Evolve Sonic Youth albums were recorded here. It's like I listened to those when I was like 13 years old, and like now I'm in the space where it was recorded. It's kind of cool. Street in this room. <clears throat> Bye. If we understand ourselves, we understand many things. If we understand life, then we understand who Great Spirit is. We always ask ourselves, what's Great Spirit? Well, Great Spirit shows me him and herself through music and through word and through sound. Who and what are we? We are life. Nothing more but that.